じで Let's talk about the most requested person, bro. About fucking time. I'm pretty sure everybody here can fucking vouch for me, bro. We got the man behind the pesty tapes. Finally, we got Mr. Pesty Swami over here. <laughs> Is Pessy Swami your real name? No, it's not. And you are not going to say your real name out there, right? I'll give you my other fake name. What's your other fake name? Pablo West. Mr. Pablo West. All seriousness. But I ask you that question, bro. If you fucking ask me, I swear I'm going to knock your ass out right now, bro. <laughs> Let's go with Mr. Ross. Mr. Ross? Let's go with Mr. Ross. You talking so, about AKA White Trash Tyler? Mr. Ross had, he had a big impact on you. You're doing this because of that. Of that person, kind of, yeah, kind of. Honestly, there's there's more people besides him, but yeah. he's the one that kind of got me into like actually to do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, the per like the first person that actually got me to do like to filming would be like Casey Neistat. Mm -hmm. Like back then, I used to watch his vlogs almost every day. Like, every time he'll post it, just straight up watch it. I don't care if I was working or in class in college. Like I was straight up just watch him. It made. It made something that became kind of popular here in Houston. It, it created the origins of Pesty Tapes. You started off filming your friends, yeah. you know, and then uh, filming your friends. The first time you did it, you had an incident, you know. There was a time when I didn't bring my tape. Yeah. Um, that kind of sucked. I had one tape that I found in my side bag. I always carry a side bag, blue camel supreme, you know, whatever. And I found it, so I first thing that I did is put it back inside the camera and run it back and rewind it. Because when it comes to VHS, you got to rewind it to get more footage. So I rewinded it all the way back to zero minutes. Yeah. And then, it, boom, I had like a minute and 20, uh, uh, an hour and 20 minutes of footage. And then I said, fuck it, let's run with it and see how long it'll take till, till we finish. Yeah. But honestly, yeah, I started off filming my friends. And then from there, we went ahead, and then I just started posting videos. Just random. First video I ever posted will be, it's me and my homie, Carlos. I call him VVS, or Chino. And someone fart. I heard that shit too, bro. Someone fart. <laughs> um, yeah, we were driving down Houston, downtown. And then where the bridges are with the LED lights and everything. I just decided to pull out my camera in perfect timing because he was playing Astro Thunder by Travis Scott. And as he's just driving, I'm just recording and filming everything. We're just in silence, just vibing it out. Quick two, three minute footage. Went back home, developed it. The first time me actually developing footage too. I didn't know what I, I, didn't know what I was doing, so I looked it up, researched. And then afterwards, once I developed everything like I was supposed to, I run it back, made it digital, and then downloaded it to my phone. Posted the first clip, like maybe 12, 1 a.m. in the morning. Just random as fuck on a random ass day. And next thing you know, like, I wake up, and it has, like, two, 300 views. And everybody's like, oh, this is hard. And that's when I was like, okay, what if I start posting me and my friends? Just, like, fucking around in Houston or just downtown. Just doing some random ass shit. Because none of us, will, like, will have, it'll be me, Maria, Jason, CJ, and all, like, every all the homies from Twitter, all the homies from Instagram. We'll just be junking around, just posting pictures and shit. But everybody else was a camera. They were mostly just photographers. They weren't videographers. So I was like, fuck it. Like, I don't got the best camera, but, you know, fuck it. Let's run it and see what's up with the VHS. So that's where that became the Pessy Tapes. I needed to have something where I can show like everybody, and every had everybody had a little part in it. Jason, boom, model, Maria, photographer, film photographer, and then all of us just had initially like a part in the Pessy tapes. Me, I'll be like the man behind the camera with the VHS. 
nobody that I knew was into VHS. And then I was like, fuck it, let's see how long it will just take, like, just to pick up. Next thing you know, that's just blowing up. Pessy tape is blowing up. I'm getting DMs from, like, random ass, like, underground rappers and stuff. Talking about, yo, pull up to the studio session. Let's have a studio session. I've never been to no studio, and I promise you. They invited me to the studio session. Man, honestly, if y'all ever smoke with rappers or producers or anybody in the music industry, be careful. That weed, it's a whole different level, man. Uh, for my mistake. But, nah, yeah, honestly, from having the studio sessions and then going to actual concerts and doing, like, recap videos, that's kind of switched up the game for me. Because I'm like, man, I'll reach out to other Houston creatives that did VHS. I'm not going to name who. But there was a couple of y'all. I used to DM y'all, and I'd be like, yo, how do I fix this? How do I turn this into this tape, what, yada, yada, and they'll never respond to me. So I was like, fuck it, you know? I'll do my own research. I did everything myself. And then next thing you know, after I'd done the series of Pesty tapes and everything, I used to get DMs of just local kids talking about, yo, how'd you get your camera to do this, or how did you digitize your videos? And I'm not going to gatekeep, so I told them straight up, like, hey, man, this is what you need, and this is what you're going to get. Get this. This works. This works good for me. This might work with you. It depends. It all depends on how you want to work your cameras. Yeah. Passing yeah. on passing on what you know. Basically, it's like, yeah. yeah. Bro, gatekeeping, I feel like that shit's, you know, like, that's the whole purpose. We want to make, we want to all work together, make this city be, you know, big. And, you know, we're talking about videographer. Now we're going to go for photography. You also take pictures here and there. And you've taken a few of, of friends as well. We started off with Vic. Uh which we're lucky enough we have him over here, uh, Maria as well. And you've taken pictures of, of somewhat big names too, like Mr. Santi and uh, Babyface Ray as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, honestly, like I said, I just started with the homies and stuff and then slowly started going out into actually doing events and stuff because they'll ask me to come out and take their pictures or video. So I always take my phone camera and then my VHS camera. Those are my two go-to. And then, randomly, I went to this event. Shout out to my boy, Slime Pilgrim. He's on tour with Hotel Ugly, Dennis Love. And they had reached out to me to go to their event. And I was like, fuck it, you know, why not? And then I realized that they were going to be TikTokers. And honestly, the only person that I knew was Santi. I didn't know anybody else besides, like, from TikTokers, just Santi. So what I did, I just went up, skipped the line, fuck the line. I'm pesty. The fuck? No, I took that back. I don't be like that. Okay. Um, I skipped the line, whatever. Uh, they knew I was a cameraman. And then I saw Santi. He was just there chilling, sipping on some water burger. And then just took a picture with him. I'm like, hey, bro, can I take a picture of you? If that's cool with you. He's like, yeah, sure, go ahead. Took two pictures. There's another one. I haven't posted it. But the other one is kind of ass, kind of mid. So I was like, nah, I'm not going to do him dirty. So the other one, the second one, that's actually the best one. That's the one I posted. But, yeah, I took that one of Santi, and then there's one of Babyface Ray. The Babyface Ray is uh, from an event. It was at a club. It was called Club Space. And Babyface Ray was going to come out to do a performance. Shout out to my boy Manzo and Dama Wampo for setting that up, man. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be at the event. And luckily, I was next to my boy Stone, which was the DJ at that club. What ended up just happening is just literally I'm just there with Stone filming everything. As everything's going on, it just got hectic because everything, everybody was just moving. Like a lot of people, they wasn't expecting that many people to actually come out. You had people from Milwaukee fly out to Houston just to come see Babyface Ray and perform. And I'm just in a DJ booth, just chilling, filming, taking pictures of everything. And next thing you know, Babyface Ray just comes up with his crew, hops in the DJ section, and we're just bumping shoulders, like, literally in between next to each other. And then out of nowhere, I was like, fuck it, you know, let me take a couple pictures. So I told him, hey, you don't mind if I take a picture? Said, nah, go on ahead. Snap a couple pictures and stuff. And then right as he's about to go perform, he hops out of the DJ section walks towards the middle, looks at me, and looks at Stone. Hey, he's like, yo, start off with this track. As soon as he said that, I'm like, this is perfect. Bring out the phone camera, snapped it, boom, real quick. 
looked at me. He's like, you got that? I'm like, yeah, I got it. Boom. Just starts performing. And there's a picture that's, that's, that's picture. out in public right now, right? Yeah, that's the one that's out right now. Caught it. Yeah, it's crazy how fucking stories go, bro. You know, it's like unexpected shit, but, it's, you know. Yeah, a lot, a lot goes in between. Like, a picture has a lot to describe. Honestly, I just like capturing the moments, like I say. Yeah, it's, always... it's it's like you have it as well. It's uh, capturing people's raw emotions or, or raw love, something like that. You know. Yeah, you're right, and it's like you never see actually people as a as a film photographer. I'm not gonna say I'm a film photographer. I just like taking pictures of people. Honestly, I seen other photographers and they tell you what to do. Whereas me, I just if it's just me, if I'm at an event, if I'm out somewhere, I'm just gonna snap the picture. Yeah, like just raw, just boom take it and it's film so you don't know how it's gonna look till i actually develop it but i don't get the i don't get the pictures back after i ship it out to my guy so everything has a story behind every little picture that i have yeah. basically but they're all good stories you know it's like core memories you know you can keep in bro we're getting bit by red mosquitoes i've never seen a red mosquito in my fucking life bro Are you? uh we have, a, we have a fan question oh okay fan question what's going on uh, I'm switching it up this time. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Let's so, get it. How, <laughs> how big is his dick? My dick. Fair, yeah, bro. They, they're not going to be asking for my dick. Honestly. <laughs> and it's a, it's a real question. It's like, babe, how big is my dick? Is my cock big enough to satisfy you? She said it. It's That's all we need to know, right? Honestly, Whoa, okay, let me... We'll go for a good eight inches, right? Eight, nine inches. Honestly, fuck the eight inches, bro. Overrated, size, right? It's overrated. It doesn't matter, okay? It really doesn't. It's really about you giving someone else pleasures. Honestly, bro, if you can make a girl squirt and orgasm at the same time... You also, time, you videograph, you know, your friends and all that. We're, let's move on to to businesses. Actual... People trying to make a business off of you know like like local businesses. Let's go for, um, let's go for Blade. Let's go for. I know you did a collaboration for Throat and Mania. We're going now. Pull up to Mania. We got everything you need, baby. And you also you also work with uh, Slapwoods. So moving from individual people to starting off businesses, you know how how was that shift for you? Honestly, I didn't know what I was expecting. I think I really got into the businesses with Blade. Shout out to the Blade boys, Matt, Zach, Nick, everybody from Blade. Man, they had a they had a shit ton of events. Honestly, they're the ones that actually started me, started to bring me out more. And that's when I got introduced to like the Ken Carson, and then they had uh, YJ. They also had West Blanco at a certain point too at another party they hosted. They done multiple events, put it like that. Um, they actually introduced me to like recap videos, which I was so it was my first time actually doing. And they're just like, "Yeah, bro, just come on, like come come through, film, do your thing, and then let us just do like a recap." And I was just like, "A recap? Like, okay, you know, I never went to a concert and actually filmed, because everybody around Houston at any venue they don't let you bring cameras unless you have a camera pass." So for me to actually shoot for Blade introduced me to actually doing recap videos, which I never done. And there's really like three, four different versions of that Ken Carson video, which is funny because like the first one that I put out, it was cool. But I was like, man, I need something else. Redid it again the second week. And I feel like that's the hardest one I ever done for Ken Carson. And moving on from Blade, Slapwoods actually reached out to me because I saw them at an event at Spire. Shout okay, out yeah. to YK, Young No. And he's Little Bushwick, which is Bushwick Bill's son. He's the one that brought me out to Spire. And then he's cool people. He's mob ties. Mob ties, we just different out here. Uh, he got me with the Slapwood family. And I honestly didn't know who was the founder or the owner of Slapwoods. But for some reason, you know, I shot a video for YK. And they were shooting for Slab Woods, which I didn't even know at the time. I didn't even know. I'm at the club. It's lights going on, music. All I see is just a small Slab Woods package that they brought out. He's rolling up. 
marijuana and rolling up the first slap with rap. So afterwards, I did a quick video for him and that at the club from Spire because Soldier Boy, that's when Soldier Boy was there. I remember now. Soldier Boy was there. Slap was there. Exotic Pop, everybody was there. They brought a fucking drone out out of nowhere. At a Inside club. the club? Inside the fucking club. Yeah, random as fuck. It's the first time I've always seen, like, a fucking drone just flying around the club. So random as hell. But after that event, they they reached out to me. And they're like, hey, man, we'll sponsor you. We'll give you, you know, certain things and shoot a couple of videos for us. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And there's still videos in the vault I haven't even brought out that has that slab with commercial. I have about three in the archive. I want to put out, I want to put them out this year. But I don't know. I'm still thinking about. It. I'm still debating. Yeah, it's still up in the air. That's that's your decision, right? It's that's, not theirs. Yeah, it's my decision. Okay. And I and I showed them to them. The first the the one I actually put out is the one with Manzo and YB. YB does a lot of uh, he does a lot of producing and engineering for uh, big names like Sauce Walker, uh, Twenty One Savage, and he also has done track with Metro Boomin as well. So and he's out of Sugar Hill Studios. So, it's pretty big names out there. Yeah. But Blade, Slapwoods, and also Mania. Like you said, I did that one video for them, and it had Throw also. Shout out to my boy Herb. Just did an interview. I saw that shit. was cool. Yeah. It was last week. It was, yeah, last week. Yeah. Last week and the well, other week, too, because you shot twice. I did shoot twice, but only one made it. Yeah. Yeah, the other one was, it was terrible, bro. Hopefully, that shit don't happen here. I don't think so. Everything's going well. But, yeah, no, he's a really cool guy. He's Yeah, he's pretty dope. Shout out to my boy Er, man. He really did that shit with Throw. Honestly, working with Mania and Throw, that was kind of hard because I got to see my boy Terry, everybody from Mania, and my boy Er. I thought it was cool, but they did a cool collaboration. They brought out the Mania. They brought out the Mania shirt that had a Jurassic Park theme, which is I don't have it on me, but I have it at the house. Cause that shit is hard. Yeah, and really just man. That one video was so weird for me because I was, as soon as I walked in, I was like, man, what are, like, how do I do this? Like, it's Mania and then it's Throw. As soon as I walked in, though, they had everything just, like, designed Jurassic theme. Jurassic theme shirts, posters. They had a whole screen up in the front with the Jurassic, uh, the, the video game. They're playing the like the video gameplay, and I was like, "Man, this is hard." And they're wearing the fucking arch- yeah, they're wearing like uniforms, architects' yeah, uniforms too. And I yeah. was just like, "Man, like Mania and, and Throw, they went all out." Honestly, like I never seen a store actually do that. Yeah, it was like you do pop ups at a, like at these stores, and it's just like, "Oh, it's just a rack with shirts." Nah, bro, Mania went all the way out. Honestly, with this shit. Shout out to Mania, bro. Y'all did y'all thing, bro. Yeah, and no, I lucky. I, I got lucky, and, you know, I, we did an interview as well. That was, uh, we're about to hit a year. Uh, oh, that was a year ago. did an interview with them. They were all super nice, you know. We we were there early as fuck. I think it was like 8 in the morning. We were just tired. But we got it done, you know, and I think it's like one of the most engaged videos out there because, you know, everybody fucks with it. And they're, they're just really organized, you know. And also Throw It is one of the highest viewed this this season. I think, or I think he's he's toe to toe with with another interview uh, MG. They're like toe to toe, so That's insane. it's like you know you can see who's really putting out the work, you know. Uh, now let's let's go with the most iconic look that you as a person have, and that is the yellow shades. Man. Is there a meaning behind the yellow shades, bro? Honestly, bro, I always wanted a pair. Of, like it, it, the yellow was just like fuck it, you know. Yeah. At this point. Back then, I I wanted new glasses. I wanted a new frame, new lenses, and everything. And for my people that wear glasses, we all hate the transition look. We all hate it. You go outside and they just turn dark. Like, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. But, like, I was like, what if I already have sunglasses and I can still use them? So instead of me just having just regular shades, I asked the girl, I asked the lady, I was like, hey, can I have, like, a yellow tint on these or a purple tint? They didn't have no purple tint, unfortunately. But she said, we have this yellow tint. It's like 50%. But you can still see and you can still, like, drive at night. And it's actually better for you. Oh, yeah. The yellow tint is yellow, better for you at yeah. night. Yeah. It enhances all the light, right? Yes. Okay. Honestly. And I was like, man. And I just got done seeing the Selena series that they did on Netflix. 
and I saw A.B. Quintanilla with the sunglasses, the, yeah. the frame. And I always wanted a frame like this because of Steve Urkel. And then I see A.B. Quintanilla wearing them. And I was like, man, what if they're yellow? And the only other person that I always seen with yellow frame glasses, or I mean yellow lenses, would be like Jonah Hill. Mm -hmm. And then I remember Ashton Travis actually – I seen him with the yellow with the yellow pair of glasses too. I'm like, man, those are so hard. And I was like, fuck it, you know? I was like, give me the yellow tint glasses and these frames. And they're like, all right, cool. Within a week, bro, not even like a whole two, three weeks, a whole week, bro. Went back and got my glasses. I was so happy, bro. I wore them. First time I wore them, I was like, whoa. Like it enhances the color of everything. And then also like I just see everything and I was like, man, it looks so beautiful. Yeah. Like, fuck it, you know? Now everybody knows you because of them. That's because, the thing. Yeah. Not a lot of people know how I look or who, who, like, who am I? Yeah. I went to certain events and then I'm like, man, I haven't seen Pesty around. I'm like, bro, that's me. Like, what the fuck? I'm here. But no, but, but like, you're close friends. Yeah. That's something that we all know. Like, oh, the yellow, the yellow the shade. That, yeah, that's, that's Pesty right there, you know? And yeah, it's crazy how like someone big can inspire you to wear something, you know? It's crazy. Because yellow shades, no one, I've never Nobody seen anybody can pull with it them. Yeah, I've and never I, seen anybody with them. And I got it, I got him complimented. I was like, nah, nah you just, just fucking around with me. Nah, yeah. There's no way. But yeah, it's weird because everybody tells me, like, bro, the yellow glasses, the yellow glasses. And I'm like, man, at this point, this shit is so iconic. Like, fuck it. I might as well just buy two, three more pairs of these shits. Yeah. And you have two, three more pairs of them? Not yet. I'm about to. You're actually. about to. I'm okay. about to. Nah, yeah, you know, it's it, it's a good look on you, man. I feel like you're right. No one can really pull off yellow shades, you know. <laughs> it's usually, like, darker or uh, translucent ones. Um, let's go with what's next, man. I know as a creator, you don't want to put much out there, but what's next, you know? Like, give us a hint. Man, honestly, what's next, I really want to put in more time into the Pesci tapes and actually have a proper rollout where I actually have, like, something not similar but i just want to have my own houston version of my own tapes so people can see what's what the houston culture what's houston really about like why is houston so popping like my boy Vic said houston is the next la is the next new york literally like there's so much shit you can do in houston you have rappers living in houston right now like 21 boy really moved into houston bro a fucking young boy lives in houston he used to live i don't know where he's at right now but Houston is the scene right now, honestly. Um, so I really want to put that into the Pessy tapes to actually, like, people know what we're about. Because people see the slabs and they're like, yo, why would the fuck would they put that, like, those big ass rims? Why? Do you don't get it. It's, it's part of, like, the Houston culture. It's what DJ Screw came about, too. Like, that Shopton Screw music, people don't know about that. Homegirl got fucking wrecked when she put out about Slowed and Reverb. You seen that shit on TikTok? She got, like, her ass handed to her because people are like, bro, that's the Houston shit. Like, that's shopped and screwed. Y'all just modernize it to being slowed and reverb. Yeah. And it's like, people don't know about shopped and screw. People don't know about DJ screw. Like, people know about the screw shop, but they don't know that the real screw shop was in Cullen back over there by Sunnyside Third War. People don't know that. And it's like, I want to put that out for people to actually know what is Houston about. This. Nah, this time you gotta be like this for sure, bro. This time we're pegaditos. Okay. Nah, so we we lost the camera, but it's all good. Um, but we're right there at the finale, bro. We're at the final part, and honestly, you know, we're good, right? Okay. At uh, you know, honestly, the final thing is is like kind of like inspiration words out there, you know, to especially in the VHS game, you know, like like you said, you had your troubles, you've had your your like questions, no one answers you, so like. What do you have to say for people who want to say, fuck it, VHS, that's the move? Is this where you go, black and white video? You want to go black and white? Nah, you don't got to, but... You'll yeah, go black and white, go ahead. Yeah, fuck you, man. Nah, you better yet do yellow tint. You want yellow tint? You but you got to be sentimental tint. about it. Man, honestly, when it comes down to, like, me talking about the VHS, fuck it, bro, like, use that shit. You good? No, I'm good, go ahead. Scared me. Honestly, fuck it, bro, like, use what you have. Honest, if you really take it back, back, right before the VHS, you'll know that I used to do videos and little vlogs on YouTube. And I used to use a GoPro. 
and that's when I, I remember Sha'ara V to my boy X, bro. Because that was the first artist I ever got a chance to actually film. And, man, Casey Neistat, like, literally, bro, has a wife from Houston, whatever. But he's like, in every video that he'll always do, he'll be like, you know, you don't need to have the best camera. You don't need to have the best equipment at all. Just use what you got and make content out of it. Quality doesn't matter. The content is what actually matters in this game. Once you have enough where you can actually fund yourself and actually get like the camera that is worth the quality, you know, fuck it. Use that shit and actually, you know, grow and make it better. But if you're just starting out and you don't know what to actually do, bro, when it comes to the VHS, to the VHS, there's a lot. It's way too much shit. It takes me about 30 minutes to an hour just to digitize everything. Literally, just pick up a camera and go film. If you want to shoot pictures? Fuck it, bro. Get a random ass camera from the thrift store. That's what I did. Got mine for five bucks and look at the pictures that it comes out with. Like, it's not bad. It's like they're really good. But yeah, just pick up whatever you want camera, VHS camera, film, whatever you want to do. Just fucking pick it up and go shoot some content, man. That's pretty much it. Thank you, bro. That was really fucking... <laughs> I was thinking, bro. That's my bad. That was really, like, crazy. Because I remember I started off with a phone. I had the iPhone 4, bro. Shitty-ass YouTube videos, bro. <laughs> hey, guys. But, yeah, it really is like that. You got to you gotta start off with what you got, you know? Um, so this is the longest fucking episode. The longest we fucking drove out. And this will probably be one of the best episodes we have so I think far. so. I think so. We'll see. So, that was Pessy Swami, Pablo West. Sorry, my bad. Yeah. Pablo West. And uh, we're in, uh, where are we? In we're in no. Ingleton. We're in, we're in we're Fort, Fort Waters. Waters. We're in Ingleton, Texas at Fort Waters. Thank you, Aiden. Thank you for your companion. Vic, Sav, you're all the way over there. And uh, thank you, bro. Really, I mean it. I appreciate it. Like, took the time. I know we were kind of like now we're finally here it, it, it we had our battles you know we yeah. we couldn't we couldn't set this up for a quick minute <laughs> for uh, months bro <laughs> so yeah we're, we're lucky it's we're been here months in the making literally and yeah thank you bro really i mean I love you. I love you so we're done no matter what we're out to the end bro was that emoji fucking that's small fingers oh the <laughs> twitzy oh my goodness all right we're fucking out bro thank you guys for watching see you guys next week